Okay, um, we have, including today, three classes to go and we finish. Um, today, we're going to do the rehearsal. Um, I've given you the scoring sheet, right? Everyone has it? Uh, four teams will present your latest version, either from last week or if you have an update, show the update, whatever you do. Uh, we will do as if you're doing the real presentation today. Uh, you, we will take a look at your delivery, we'll take a look at content, and I, and you, all of you, will do a very detailed comment, slide by slide, uh, team by team. Okay, we're going to spend entire three hours running and going over your material so that you'll be ready 100%, I hope. Okay, and any improvement you can make, you'll do it today. Because next week, when you come back, it'll be your final presentation, Official presentation, you be scored upon it, and there's no more. Uh, you would do it, we do it again type of the uh, uh, opportunity. So today we'll take ex uh, extra opportunity to review everything that you have: your content, your delivery, your skills and presentation, your Q and A's, and everything. We'll do it today for every single team. Okay, and um, once every team does the delivery, everyone else will take the uh, role of the panels or the role of the client, and you will score other teams' uh, activities based upon your own judgment. I will tell you what to do a little later, but that's what you're going to do. You're going to be the panels or the clients, okay? That's today. And next week, when you come back, uh, we're going to have some outside guests who will be the uh, panels who will score you, who, who will assume as the role of the clients, and who will listen to your pitch for the first time. And, you know, I, ho I hope that you'll be uh, impressing those guests from outside. And then the uh, final week, of course, we're going to have a final exam. Um, if you participated every single class with passion, with enthusiasm, you know, with the listening ears, you'll be all right. There's not much to memorize. Things you've done in the past you know, semester, you know, it's in your memory, and that's what it is. We haven't really talked about things to memorize, like I said. It was a discipline. It was your experience. It was, it was your understanding. It was what you felt. We'll be testing you on what you learned, what you, dis what you are disciplined with, and things you know already by now. Okay, so um, I'll write more about the testing a little later, but that's about the uh, basic uh, direction. Okay? Um, take a look at the uh, scoring sheet. Let me uh, go over those first. All right. Um, let's take a look at number A, uh, section A first. We will take a look at your consulting contents, your PowerPoint or press or whatever you have. Um, no matter how good the content may be, unless it is displayed in a visually appealing, easy to understand, and attractive manner, people who will listen to your pitch will not understand. So we're going to be um, looking at these areas. Are you making the presentation content very visually ap appealing? simple to understand. And do you have uh, some depth in uh, your planning and analysis? And do you have the logical thinking process, some story we can understand throughout your presentation? Uh, four section you will be assessing, and you give the highest score five if you think they've done the, they the best. You give one if you, done a, if you think they've done a very uh, poor job, okay? Moving on to section B, it's about delivery. No matter how good the content may be, unless you uh, understand exactly what to do with those content and create a very comfortable and stable delivery, people who understand, people who listen to you will not uh, be with you. So um, first thing we're going to look at is your, uh, how you're going to present yourself, your stability, your competency, your eye contact, postures, are you moving unnecessarily or are you, are you, moving, are you not moving st you know, steadily and provide a very stable uh, presentation. Do you, uh, do you explain the content looking at the uh, wall and not looking at the wall, not looking at the audience, or do you look at the content and explain these contents to the audiences in a very easy to understand manner? We're going to look at that. Are you posing yourself credibly, or are you just uh, you know, here to just play your own thinking? Okay? And uh, we're going to be asking questions, and we hope that um, your response, either from the presenter, presenter or the, from the team, I hope those uh, Q&A responses are professional enough so that we can be impressed. Um, C, section C, we're going to look at your qualitative uh, part. 
Um, some will read from your presentation note. Some we can, we can understand we have a passion, you have enthusiasm to, to display. If you understand your content, if you really believe in your uh, consulting work, I hope you display your passion and enthusiasm throughout your presentation. Uh, in your explanation, in your content, in your delivery, we want to see your uh, creativity as well. Uh, are you talking about something that we already know? Are you, are you talking about something that we can be impressed upon? Uh, persuasiveness and credibility also we're going to look at. Are you explaining these things in a very, very logical, empathetic manner so we can understand we can be with you or not? And in presentation on Q&A, uh, if someone else in your team want to help in uh, responding to the uh, questions, uh, we want to look at those teamwork as well. So figure out what to do with those teamworks. And last minute, uh, you as a panel, you as a client, you're going to say, oh, I will accept this proposal or I will deny this proposal. If you accept fully, you give 20%. If you only accept part of the proposal, you give 10%, 10, 10 point. If you say, no, I don't like it, I deny it, you give zero point on that. Okay? You make the decision. And 20% is the uh, uh, participation, so everyone gets 20%. So entirely, 100 point is the uh, uh, maximum point you can get. When a team presents, every one of you uh, will have a same measure, same metric to assess uh, all four teams, except your own team. You will not assess your team. You will assess three other teams, except your team. Okay? So um, any questions so far? And next week, we're going to have the same scoring uh, sheet scored by the outside panels, not you guys this time, next time. Any questions? Uh, today's rehearsal and next week's presentation will be recorded. And later on, you can take a look at yourself presenting. Okay? So um, uh, don't mind the uh, uh, camera. Just do as you, as you do naturally, and you know, we'll see how it goes. Okay? Um, we're going to pick and choose which team is going to go first. We have Sony team, right? Still Sony? No change? All right. We have Kakao team. We have uh, Xiaomi. We have, what are we missing? What's, uh, who are we missing? BBQ, right, sorry. Okay, who's gonna go first? Raise your hand, which team? Um, good evening, we are presenter of Xiaomi team. I'm Hiji and he's Kyungsoo. <coughs> From the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, money is a medium that separates lover, that separates lover family apart and make people lose their pride. Money in most of company, money in most of company, making money is company object. However, we want to make Xiaomi. We want to make Xiaomi. We want to make Xiaomi's purpose contribute to more higher goal. It is every family is happy. So following this order, using smart device and smart audio, we will make smart home era by Xiaomi, and it will make every family in happy. So above all, we will talk about Xiaomi status and direction Xiaomi should take in smart home market. In this graph, currently Xiaomi smart home market share is 5.2%. Compared to Samsung or Apple, it is a low figure. But compared to before quarter, Xiaomi has a great rise in smart smartphone market share. And this graph is the rate of smartphone rate of using smartphone. And in this low price smartphone using rate is increasing. And we think this trend is expected to continue. This is the price of smartphone. And compared to Samsung and Apple smartphone, Xiaomi has a 
Xiaomi has a less than half price of products. And you, you will think that a Xiaomi product is, Xiaomi's product has current performance, its price will be lower than Samsung or Apple. But if you think like that, you will make a mistake. This is Wall Street, a Wall Street Journal's evaluation on Xiaomi's products. And IT columnist Jeffrey Flores said, Xiaomi's smartphone has a four star. This is higher than Samsung Galaxy Note that got a three star. So we think that Xiaomi can so we think Xiaomi can make a low price by focusing on online sales, reducing the cost of expanding distribution network, and investing in strengthening software of Rupi. And in the future, low and destruction strategy is what Xiaomi could take. Low and destruction strategy is the strategy that if the existing product quality overwhelms normal consumers' expectation level, company can lay the market by releasing lower and cheaper products. And <coughs> Hyundai and Toyota always succeeded by using this strategy. Hyundai run, Hyundai launching launching low price car targeting low income consumers. And they said 10 year 10 mile warranty. Through this strategy, Hyundai, Hyundai make a profit a lot. And Toyota also succeeded in launching high uh, Toyota also succeeded in penetrating high class consumers by launching high by launching Lexus which was based on low-income consumers' cheaper price. So applying this tactic to Xiaomi, Xiaomi can make low price premium by cheaper In the case of a smartphone and OS, Xiaomi can make, um, make people, Xiaomi can make people more, uh, Xiaomi can make more Loyalty and trust people. Xiaomi can make people loyalty and trust higher by frequently applying consumer opinion. And that comes to talk about smartphone and smart motor. Oh. Imagine a half of the future. I guess every one of you have a different image of it. The half of the future, which we name smart home, will look like this. To start with, for that who has a hiking appointment tomorrow, mounting crosses will be placed at front of the closet. Tomorrow's weather forecast and the hiking trail will be printed out in the study. For mom who will, who will prepare father's lunch box for that, would we'll just input the receipt in her smartphone and later bring in the delivered food on the way home. For the son who exercised in the hot weather, Hot weather with a V band on, the air conditioner and air purifier will be turned on beforehand, and a glass of iced tea will be pre prepared at the front door. Lastly, for the daughter who likes to listen to music, the music matching her preference will be played in her. All of this is done by the smart module. The smart module is a product of Xiaomi which can be linked with the home appliances in a USB form. <clears throat> you might think that a product such as the smart module is only being developed in Xiaomi and would be take 
a long time to see it in a real life. In fact, the smartphone market currently exists and the scale of the market is rapidly growing. The smartphone market includes five in the industries. Uh, first is smart convergence appliance and home automation, smart home security, smart green home, and smart TV and home entertainment. All five in industries are expected to grow, but, but the markets of the smart TV and smart converters appliances industries are especially large and growing remarkably. Currently, Xiaomi is keeping up with the state of the art technology by preventing, uh, presenting the smart home set based on the Internet of Things as well as its unique technology Mi Home. Considering the China's smartphone market will take up one fourth of the world market, the smart module we explained in the first place would, would be an effective solution. The products and strategies above show the humble and open minded company culture of Xiaomi. By focusing on not only communicating with the consumers, but also communicating with their lives, <laughs> Xiaomi would be able to escape the fake Apple image and become a number one company which devotes itself for customers' family happiness. Thank you for listening. Overall, it seems that your team has improved 100 times better than previous presentations. Very good. You've done a great job. Okay, I can give you a very big compliment. Um, however, you were so much focused on the content, you were not caring about the clients, the audiences. If you spend a little more attention on the client level, the audience level, your presentation will be you know, a thousand times better. You are looking at the uh, screen, you're looking at the note. If you need a note, create a bullet points, everyone. If you need to uh, go back to the uh, um, scenario of the story of your presentation, write a bullet point of the uh, key points so you don't forget. However, do not try to read every word from the entire note. Because you'll be only looking at the note and never look at the client, no eye contact. Uh, even if the content is great, uh, your presentation will be the worst, okay? So that's the one comment. What else? What else did you notice? What was good about their presentation? What was bad about their presentation overall? What can you say to uh, tell them to uh, improve? I felt the same. Um, you had two presenters. The initial presentation was clear enough in the content so that we followed you. And then you went into the uh, major focus of your uh, consulting work where it was um, very quiet throughout the entire presentation. And we kind of lost you. While the content was also very um, well prepared, the presenting of it was a little too quiet. You guys lost our attention in the, in the second part of the presentation. While you were reading the content, while you were just showing the uh, wall of the presentation uh, content, and we were not with you. Okay, so try to connect the point that you're trying to stress with the audiences, okay? Uh, step by step, slide by slide. When you have to emphasize, you emphasize, and you move on to the next slide. Don't just read every slide. If you read every slide, we will lose you. You will lose us, okay? So emphasize on key point. Make sure that everyone follows you by making the eye contact. Create the connection. Do not, do not ever lose those connections. Move on to the next slide, and next slide, and next slide, while carrying the client, carrying the audiences every single slide. Okay? What else can you say? Like the sunglasses. What else is there? Okay, let's move on to the first slide by slide. Let's give a comment. Now for uh, Xiaomi team, X mark your own uh, column because you're not going to be assessing your own team, X market. And everyone else, 
you'll be scoring if you haven't done it now while we look at the uh, slide uh, page by page, slide by slide. Okay? Give some assessment. Let's see the uh, overall. You had a black background with a clear white or red uh, big typeface, which is very professional. I like it very much. I would give high score on this type of visual uh, appealing. Okay, you've done a lot of thinking, and it was very good. I have to say, this is a top-notch professional uh, display to start. Let's move to the next, next page. Attention getter. They used this movie of Will Smith, The Person of Happiness. And they talk about the money, the happiness, family, our, our life, and everything. They've created some attention-getting story where people can empathize with, people can connect, relate with. It was a very good approach, too. I like it very much. Okay, Moving on. Second page, second, uh, second photo. You know, um, they picked some um, key visuals from the movie so that uh, relating happiness and money uh, is something that we can, we can emphasize with. And they chose, uh, you know, I think, good visual to, to create the empathy. Uh, so far, so good. And we, while maintaining the uh, professional background in black, uh, they're uh, creating one key point in one slide, like Steve Jobs' presentation format. Uh, they kept it in a very professional manner. I like it. Next page. Okay, so you, so you create a common sense uh, agreement from the audience that everyone, every company wants to make money. How about Xiaomi? Okay. Every family's happiness is what you want to write, maybe. Every family's happiness, uh, grammatically correct. You want Xiaomi's uh, focus to be on the happiness of family than making money. I think that it is a, a good strategic direction, and your direction from the beginning, from the end, it is consistent. I like it, too. Okay? Uh, you've done a, a major improvement in your thinking, in your content. Only if you can improve on the delivery, I think you're going to be a super, super good. Okay? Next page. How? Very good. See? See how they do it? Every single page, they do not write too much. How? Money? Happiness? One word? One picture, very simple sentence, we are following you. We were following you uh, first half because you were strong and brief with one simple content, one simple thinking. It was easier for us to follow you. But the second part, you write so much, so many pictures, and we don't know where to focus. We don't know um, what to follow you. There was a little difference between first half and second half, I think. Again, uh, very simple uh, graphics and the logic of how you will create the happiness for the family. Let's see. Low price plus uh, smart module goes to smart home and makes every family in the world happy. That happy is OK. Now, um, it has some technical specification on what to do with a smart, smart home, and that's where you might lose us. So be careful on how to emphasize simplicity in consulting what to do with that idea instead of just giving us too big a concept. Uh, you've done a very simple page-by-page uh, -page presentation in the beginning, but in the second half, it got too much. Maybe you want to uh, make it more brief, make it more simple, so we can follow you slide by sli slide. Next page. It was good, again, they kind of uh, give us the direction of what they're going to talk about next. While giving us the expectation, and you follow through with the expectation, we can be with you and not lose you, or vice versa. Your attempt on the content creation, content design is, is excellent. I love it. Using the black and gray and the, uh, the color uh, with the uh, text, they're all professional looking. I love it. To create credibility using the market data is, is important, and you've done a great job. When you do a proposal, you follow uh, two steps. Number one, 
you claim, you propose, you suggest your own vision. That's your thinking. That's more subjective, right? But when you say those vision in a subjective manner, you have to back it up with the data, facts, maybe history, maybe reality, which is more objective. Now, they say, make family happy. That's what's going to make Xiaomi different than Samsung, than Apple, or whatever. OK, why, we're going to ask, and how, we're going to ask. And they're gonna, they've done their own vision proposal, and then they're going to move on to uh, backing up, supporting their own vision by creating data, facts, and some historical uh, uh, information, and so on and so forth. So their evidence is strongly presented. Their approach is good. Moving forward. OK. Right here, a little uh, small co comment. When you put the uh, US dollar sign, make sure to put it in the beginning, not at, not at the end. Okay, that's how the US dollar is written, uh, not in the end, but in the beginning. Um, if you can somehow put, let's say, the, ch the expensive phone, which is uh, 770, as 100%, you do a percentile calculation, this is 100%, this is a 90%, this is a 40%. If you do a percentile analysis, it's easier for us to uh, understand how, ch how inexpensive that particular phone is uh, compared to other uh, competitors. Okay, moving forward. Again, it's a credibility. They've done a research and found uh, a credible authority, which is Wall Street Journal IT columnist, a uh, guy named whatever the name may be. Well, he carries the authority, the credibility, by not just claiming what they believe in, by inviting experts' opinion from somebody we all trust. They have uh, established the credibility issue in a very perfect manner. Good job. And they made uh, Xiaomi's uh, uh, standings, the status, the presence in the marketplace, one and of, one and of its own kind, a unique uh, standing, which is a very good approach to moving forward. Next page. Oh, you lost it. Go back. Xiaomi's differences from other companies. Low price premium. If you want to focus on that, maybe you want to uh, put a more you know, um, bold color, maybe, maybe black color on low price premium, so, we, so it can be emphasized. Okay? Major focus, major strategy, major suggestion has to stand out. Not go with us, uh, other content, but it has to stand out so we can see, oh, that's the key. That's the most important thing. We want to know, all right? Um, okay, moving forward. I like it again. Um, you give the movie as the attention-getting, empathy-setting uh, story. You give a vision of your own claim. You give a market data to support as an evidence, and then you give on uh, providing the strategy. Uh, what and how Xiaomi can create such a proposal. I like those logical process of one to another and another. Those steps of logics are very good. I like it. And you explain what it means. Very good. Because some people may not know what that means. You are going very detail oriented in caring about client's understanding, which was excellent. And you give an example. Again, very good approach. And you were explaining how those case studies um, created uh, successful results by giving out the detailed information by comparing it. And here, I'm not sure about 10-year, 10-mile warranty. Maybe it is a 10-year, 100-mile warranty, because 10-mile is nothing in 10 years. Right? So go back to the statistics, go back to research, and I think there may be, uh, I don't know, 100 mile, 100,000 mile or even higher. Do some research again. And if you make the, a mistake like that, you lose your credibility. Okay? Do, a research, do a research again. Now, I understand how Hyundai uh, used 
low, low end destruction uh, strategy. When it comes to Xiaomi, not sure. You're saying you launch low price smartphones in OS, and you want to you ask consumers' opinion, and it's kind of blurry from one point to another, and the ending results. I'm not sure if I understand clearly how you want to achieve such a goal. It's a little blurry. It's a little uh, conceptual. Try to be more. Um, let's go back to Hyundai uh, slide. Hyundai, they give low price car with a little flaw, little error in the uh, mecha mecha mechanics, and still they give 10 year plus whatever mile warranty. So they, uh, they raise the expectation of the consumers, and even if it's raised, Hyundai knows that they can meet the expectation. That it, c c c consumers cannot be mad at Hyundai. Moving to uh, Xiaomi's uh, strategy, you say low price and ask consumers' opinion and what? I'm not sure. It's very conceptual, a little vague. It's not specific enough on what to do. Do a little more thinking and try to fill uh, with some policy like Hyundai did and come up with some idea. Okay, next page. Now, this is the beginning of a big idea, and make sure that you do not lose us, okay? You have a full of idea, unless you communicate that with our understanding, those ideas will be just a waste, okay? Next page. Now, can somebody from your team, either you or someone else, try to explain this entire concept again so we can follow you? In a summary manner, not every slide, but the summary, what are you trying to propose? Give me your uh, brief version again. Take one minute, two minutes, three minutes, whatever it takes. Give us a summary version of what this strategy is all about. Come, come forward. So we can understand and not lose you, or vice versa. Try. Now, when you give a summary version, you have to understand what it means. Otherwise, you can't explain. So understand what it means, explain to us in a simple manner, take one minute, two minutes, three minutes, a summary version so we can follow you from, from that point onward. Go. You're going to tell us how the smart home will make our home life, home living more comfortable. And then that will trigger us to be more happy in a family setting. Say that somewhere. Say it in the beginning. Okay? Say it in the beginning in a clear easy to understand manner, so you let us know what is your direction of the proposal. And then explain slide by slide how those smart home configuration in technology using Xiaomi's phone, and how those Xiaomi phone, smart module, smart home can make us happy. Create those connectivity, and you will never, never lose us. Okay? Good. Uh, let's see your next page. Explain again what this means to us. We kind of lost you. What does Xiaomi's phone and what does Xiaomi's smart module do to make our home happier and more comfortable place to live in? We don't understand exactly. It's a little blurry, a little conceptual. Um, that is how Xiaomi's smart module. And it can connect in comfortable devices by uh, it can connect in comfortable devices and Xiaomi smartphone can control smart uh, can control electronic devices which is connected to smart module. So this is controller and um, central con control system. Yeah. Control center, control system, and electronic devices, which is not comfortable. Compatible. Yeah. Compatible. Okay, which is not compatible. So, Xiaomi's, your idea is like this. Xiaomi's smartphone device will become the central device, central point to connect and control every device at home. And by controlling every device at home with a single touch of button using Xiaomi's phone, you make the uh, entire living in the home very comfortable. And with that comfort you create, it can, it can give a um, 
basis for, foundation for families happy, in a happy life. Is that what you're trying to say? Is that kind of idea? So say it next time. Okay? Xiaomi's device, central point of control. Other devices, oh, they are not compatible. They are not compatible, so they are disconnected. Not good, not comfortable. Use a simple English. You don't have to use a Shakespeare English. Use a simple English of word by word. We understand better, maybe. Xiaomi's device, central point. Many devices at home, all disconnected. Not comfortable, not compatible. No good. So we connect with the Xiaomi phone. And with the connection, connectivity, we make the entire device all uh, seamless, connected. And that's very comfortable for the uh, homeowner, family members. With the comfortable usage of all devices, our family life will be happier. Maybe that logic. Okay, next page. Smart home market. Now, you have some monetary value. Without the unit of this value, it doesn't mean anything. Is it in US dollars? Is it in million dollar scale, thousand dollar scale? We have no idea. Every single time you put numbers in this kind of box, and especially when it's a currency, make sure to you put unit. Is it in dollar? Is it Korean won? I don't know. Is it Chinese won? I don't know. And is it in uh, omission of the thousand, which is three zeros, or omission of the million, which is six zeros? I don't know. Specify those currency uh, units so we understand exactly what they mean. And number two, you have suddenly so much data. You have different um, section of the market. You have different years, different numbers. I don't know which one to look at. If you have some idea to focus on certain number, for example, I don't know, maybe this is important. You put a, I'm sorry, go back. You put a red square here. I'm sorry. You, put, you can put a red square on top of this number and you focus on what this means. Do not just throw how many, how many, two, four, five, about 20 numbers here, I don't know, 25. And we, our eyes cannot follow 25 different numbers. That's very hard for us. Easier for us to follow one single number, either here or there, or whatever it is. Put a red square on top of the number and emphasize, focus on one simple idea per slide. Even if it's 25 numbers, I don't care. What's the important number we want to know? Put an emphasis. Is it the summation of everything? Then say so. It's just one number, then say so. Put a, put a mark so we can understand, we can follow you. One idea per slide works. 25 numbers per slide, oof, too confusing. Next slide. Again, um, because my home or me home, small home said, a little blurry in, co in concept, and you understand maybe, you know what it is, but us, the clients, us, the audiences, uh, we're listening, but we don't understand. Okay? Try to create one simple idea one page after another, create a connection between each slide, create a story between each slide, like you did in the beginning. Remember the, uh, the happiness movie, Will Smith's movie? Money, happiness, little kid on the floor with a daddy, uh, Hyundai. Those were stories with a very good logic, logical flow, slide by slide. They were very good. And then second half, you kind of lost us because you were big concept, too big concept, and we don't know what's, what's important, slide by slide. Try to create some uh, adjustment in there. I think you can do a good job, because you've done it in the first half. You can do it in the second half again. Next slide. OK. A lot of pictures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. OK. Uh, do we have some text here or no? Next page. See? Go back. Go back. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pictures, no text. We're listening in the middle of the confusion already, and we don't know what you're trying to say there. You were saying something, or you're reading something, and you were talking to yourself, not to the audiences. You lost us completely right then and there. Okay? So if you want, if you have some focus, maybe one single picture. If you need seven pictures, it's okay. Then put a simple word. A vocabulary, a sentence, a focus we want to be reminded upon. 
okay? Treat us like a little kid. You guys are PhD uh, uh, doctors. You understand how, how Xiaomi should move on. We, Xiaomi man, uh, manage management, we don't know what you're thinking. So treat us like elementary school kid. Give us simple, easy to understand, focused uh, content so we can follow you and never lose you. That's the key of a presentation. Do not consider us the same level of expertise. You guys are experts. You guys are high brain power. We don't know. We want to follow you. If you create too much information in a single slide or, li or too little information, we just lost you. Okay? So make sure that you do not lose us in a, every single slide by slide format. Next page. Communicate with us consumers, communicate with their lives. What's the next slide? Good. Explain this slide one more time. I think this is the uh, nutshell, the core of your proposal. Explain to me again, to us again, what this means in a summary statement, summary proposal. Somebody, either you guys or somebody. I don't know. Tell, tell the client, tell the audiences. What does it mean? Give us a, you know, you can use a simple English word, simple sentence, you know, take a pause, bring the attention of the clients, okay? You don't have to keep saying things. You can say some word and take a look at the clients. Create thousand eye contacts, have their attention. Then you say one word, then another word, okay? Do not lose those connectivity. When you want to get, get across your points of proposal, Reading it or saying it rapidly doesn't, uh, doesn't get the job done. Say it in a slow manner, one word at a time, make the eye contact, bring their attention, grab them, and then you finish your, finish your uh, comments, your statements. Try again. Think and try again. Everyone, pay attention, please. This is the uh, punch blow. Do a punch blow. Uh, uh, sentence means, uh, sentence means not only communicate with the consumers like, uh, Kijun. Kijun? Uh, existing? Existing products, not existing products, uh, but with smart home of Xiaomi, you can communicate with their life. So, Try again. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're trying good. I want you to try. None of us here. You want to say something? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is it one sentence or are they two sentences? Like, do they form a, like a whole or like... Oh. One sentence. One sentence. Oh. Not only communicate with the consumer, but also... Yeah. I'm, I'm asking because you have like two times the quotation marks on the side, so yeah. I was wondering maybe it was like two different sentences. Okay. Now one thing I want to say, most of you are not native English speakers, which is not a shame, which is not a crime. Okay? Nothing to be ashamed if you're not a native speaker of English. It's okay. Now what you don't have is the confidence to speak out. We all, have stiff, we, all, we all have similar uh, level of English proficiency. Now, the core of this class is to give you the confidence in speaking in, in public, in English. Doesn't matter whether you have a great accent, great pronunciation, a lot of vocabulary or not, it doesn't matter. Whether you have confidence or not, that matters. Even if a person does not speak fluent English, person is invited to a United Nations uh, Assembly meeting, and he speaks with a broken English, but with a, with a passion, with enthusiasm, with a strong belief, people will be impressed and give a standing ovation. English is not the key. It's the passion. It's the enthusiasm. It's the strong belief you believe in. Say with those strong belief and passion, your voice will be different, like I say, like the way I say it. If you say in a very soft, shy manner, because I'm not sure if I'm saying, saying it correctly, well, nobody's going to trust you. Because you, you don't have confidence. If, you if you're not confident about what you believe in, no one will be confident with you. Okay? Say in a confident voice. Speak slowly. 
use one word at a time, explain simply, not in a very vague manner, using a simple vocabulary, which you already know. If you don't know, you can ask, what's uh, Kijon, or oh, existing? You can ask and we can give you the uh, vocabulary. It's okay. Not knowing the vocabulary is not the, uh, not, not the uh, problem. Not having the confidence can be a problem. So try again. Okay? You have your idea what you're trying to uh, propose to us. Think again. Remember I did this? Your action comes from your thinking. If you don't have the thinking all arranged, your word cannot come in a clear, simple manner. So think first, what are you trying to say? What's the point? Get to the point. Remember the video? Get to the point. What's the point? Think first. What's the point you want to present? Think. Maybe one word. Maybe one sentence. Maybe a few sentences, line by line. Make sure to grab your attention. And then you say with confidence. Think again now. Give you uh, one minute and say again. Everyone, please face front. Thank you. Face front. Turn your table, turn your chairs, please. Try again. Maybe you want to come to the front so everyone can, can look at you. You are, you are the most important person in this room this time. You are the VIP. Everyone, give him a big hand, please. Stand with confident posture. Not like this. Uh, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. No, don't do that. Stand with confidence, strong uh, lower body, strong voice. Strong eye contact, strong word, and you are the VIP this room, okay? Command the room. Come, come to the front. Good. I like it. Now, you want to create a logic. Listen again. Apples, Samsungs, other smartphones, they only sell devices. Listen to my logic, okay? I'm going to do it again. I'm here. Try to get, get your attention. Everyone, please look front. This is for you, too. Even, though, even if you're not doing the Xiaomi uh, uh, analysis, apply this wisdom, apply this discipline to your own team's presentation, and it's better for you. So please pay attention, everyone. If you're not, this is time to improve yourself. I will do this type of uh, uh, attention getting. Apple, Samsung, other phone makers. They create good devices. They sell those devices, and that's the end of it. Xiaomi, we produce better devices, lower cost, and we care for our clients, our, our, our customers' family life. Using our device, and we communicate with the family life, Xiaomi, Xiaomi's uh, phone is not just more than a smartphone. It is the uh, tool to make every family life are very happy. You know why? Because we do this, whatever they may be. What I'm trying to do right now, as a, as a you know, instant uh, improvisation, you create the connectivity between Xiaomi and the world, Xiaomi and the consumers. Maybe you want to talk about a little bit about the, you know, competition and what they don't do, Xiaomi does. What they do not get, Xiaomi gets. Consumers are not happy with other, other uh, product lines. They're happy with the Xiaomi lines because Xiaomi does this. Emphasize slowly with one word at a time. Create the connection, connectivity with your eye contact, with your voice, with the mood. They are with you now. With your strong voice and confidence, you are a very important person. And we follow, we respect you. Okay? Try to create that kind of mood. When you go to ending, especially, you want to create the uh, connectivity with the entire audiences with a simple, slow, strong statement and comment. Okay? You don't have to like, uh, uh, go, go shy. Don't do that. Okay? You're doing good. Next page. <laughs> uh, delete this page. What I believe in, at the end of presentation, you do not need to say thank you. Rather, if you want to put maybe uh, some picture here that can be, uh, that can, that can um, explain your proposal in one single picture or one single word, better than thank you. Does everyone know that? Okay, you thank you, all right. Doesn't mean anything. 
put a little picture here, maybe uh, some smiley, happy face of a family or a little baby or mother. He's emphasizing that. Maybe some high-tech uh, uh, city, I don't know, whatever it is. Some picture or some word that can relate to the message you're trying to deliver. Better than thank you. Right? Good. Any other comments? Any other questions? Overall, your contents are great. Uh, I think you've done a great logical sequence of the storytelling. You found uh, the relevance between your idea, the market data, its own standing, and the uh, consumer's uh, attitude. You found all the relevances and the connectivities. You've done a great job. And if you can just modify a little uh, improvement here and there and create a strong presentation like the way you did, strong, confident presentation, you're going to be all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pretty funny. I'm wearing a <coughs> yellow clothing today, but actually, I didn't mean to, but let's get to the top of page for today. Uh, OK. I'll first like to show you about what a walletless society might look like through a middle play. Your TBS credit cards, loyalty cards, discount coupons, and a whole lot more all on your NFC-enabled phone. Plus, it's password protected, so your transactions are more secure. Just select the card on your phone, and you're ready to tap wherever you go. With NFC, your day will never be the same again. Taking a cab to work? Just tap to pay for your cab fare. How's that for a fast and easy payment? A cappuccino, please. With NFC, you can tap to pay and earn loyalty stamps, too. Congrats, your next coffee is on us. Run out of ideas for lunch? No problem. We'll always have great dining deals lined up for you. And you can always reserve a table with a touch of a button. Welcome, your table is right this way. Tap to redeem this offer instantly as you pay. You'll never have to bother with carrying coupons again. Watch movie trailers, book your seats, and receive your e-tickets on the spot. No worries about losing your tickets, because they're stored on your phone. Have some time to shop before the movie starts? With discount coupons and reward cards all stored in your phone, shopping is an absolute breeze. What's more, you'll receive the latest offers while you shop, so you can tap to redeem, pay, and earn loyalty points all at once. It's showtime, and guess what? You get to skip the queues. Just tap and head straight in. Ready to experience a world of convenience like never before? Embrace the future. That's what it is said in the video clip. We can embrace the future with this simple technology of the pay mobile payment. And here is what Kakao has been doing and what they have as their value. And the first one could be they have the ubiquitous messaging platform, which are which is called Kakao Talk, and which we most of us also we use and we have this our customer relationship with security and we also provide incentives to use and events and a lot of favors which we can be connected to all the channels from simple platform which is called Takao Talk. It's all what we all know. And now with Takao Pay this is what we want to do change the complicated mobile payment, still it's very complicated compared to the car payments, to be easier and faster with safety. To start, uh, we have reached the 100 million mark in total user of the Kakao Talk. However, this is not enough. Uh, it is enough for the Kakao Talk, but we only have 4 million people using Kakao Pay currently what's happening to Kakao Pay. The Kakao Pay can be used right away from the Kakao Talk, but not everyone is using it. So we closely look into our Kakao Pay. To start, uh, we had a really small number of users, which I said we only had reached 400, four, that, sorry, that's 4 million, 4 million mark very recently and it only has 50 affiliates existing on online. Secondly, 
we have very, very low attractiveness. Only 50% of users who have credit card have, been, you have, have used the Kakao Pay, and, but Kakao Pay is not the only mobile payment. They have a lot of other tools like Samsung Pay, Apple Pay, and PayPal, and PayNow, there are tons of it. But still, the entire uh, financial technology is not being used because of low reliability and lack of opportunity to use. Why? It's, well, as what I said, it has not had, it's very limited to online. Not only for Kakao Pay, but for also the entire fin FinTech, which is financial technology. So what we are trying to do is make people use it, but how provide them with the environment and why, why so we can increase the number of users and from that change their recognition about the mobile payments. However, as I want to say, we all are facing the regulation, especially on the financial technology. There are many of them. There are regulations about financial industry, and online regulations, because we are using it through mobile. And there are also regulations about personal data. Since the cards and all the passwords are related to us, our own, we cannot hand them to all the, we cannot hand them just by, for free, because it's our own precious personal data. These are what regulations are about. However, we are trying to, to overcome the regulations. The regulations and people's recognition, lack of attractiveness doesn't matter, because we are having this uh, new technology. Actually, it, it, the, with the technology called RFID, which is Radio Frequency Identification. Actually, this is not really a new technology since many people are using it through their phones and what the transportation card, which we usually call T-Money. Um, we have been using it a uh, form of NFC. But we are trying to use this for payments. If you see here, we have a recipe card. You can see a uh, device attached to a card, which can tap to the materials that the materials that you have to buy for the certain recipe as you go by through the marts. It, which means there are products existing and uh, this device recognize which one to buy and which one to pay. And we are like, we would like to Combine this system with our Kakao Pay, which means we have. I have this phone with me. I would like to buy uh, uh, buy something from the Mart. I go to the materials and I get my phone get lit, uh, closely to the product. We will recognize it and the payment will be done as soon as I put it in the put it put it near the product. And this is how we are thinking to change the complicated mobile payment to be easier and faster. Thank you. Well, it looks like a joke, but actually he's making a good, good comment because um, when you do a professional presentation, you know Steve Jobs usually wears a, a black t-shirt and a, you know, a jean, blue jean? It's, that's his trademark. So whenever he uh, comes to the podium, his uh, visual, consistent visual creates the uh, uh, consistent credibility as a professional expert running a company called Apple. So when you do a Kakao Toe, which has a, a yellow uh, corporate brand color, wearing a yellow t-shirt may or may mean something instead of using uh, some, some other color that does not mean anything. So um, I think you're making a relevant uh, uh, comment there too. Create the visual connectivity between the, the corporation, the client, and the consultant. Makes sense. What else? Any other comments? All right, it's my turn. Let's go to the first page. Yeah, start with the first page. Everyone, face front, please. This is for you, too. This presentation is for the English-speaking audiences. Whether they are native speakers or not, doesn't really matter. So try not to put a non-English character in there. If you have to, you put it because you have to. 
because uh, if you want to say something in Korean or any other language, because that has a relevance to the message of the pr proposal, then you can put it in. Otherwise, if you put some Korean there, it only tells me that you are lazy. Lazy enough not to translate it, la lazy enough not to delete the uh, text. Okay, so do some work on trying to uh, not to put those text, non-English text, that has no relevance. Okay, that's first comment. Next. Video, Wallerless Society, and your attention getting device is showing the video of showing the future. Everyone uses wallet, everyone uses plastic credit card, and you're saying the future will have no wallet in transaction. And you show a video that has a strong relevance, as he put it, which was a good attention getter, and has a, a great connectivity between the audience and your message, which was good. Moving forward. Now here, too many data. One's simple and focused. Two's confusion. Three is a crowd. You have three different ideas, very small uh, message there. We don't know uh, what's important. You, don't, you may understand what they mean, but the audience don't, do not know which one to even take a look at. So if you can, try to uh, separate those ideas into separate pages and go slow, go simple. And there, I saw a, uh, a spelling uh, error there. Technical support has an uh, uh, I that you don't, you don't, that they don't belong. Technical support. We catch those things. It tells me that you are not paying attention to the details. Nobody in your team paid attention to those spelling uh, mistakes. That means that you are not working in a very professional manner. One simple error in spelling tells me a lot of things about your team as a message. Um, again, explain to me, you have three different ideas in one single slide. Explain to me once again, what are you trying to say here? What's the key point? The value that Kakao has currently, it has the value propositions about the Kakao talk platform and the customer relationships, what they have been uh, building on through the Kakao talk platform. And the channels is exactly what related with uh, the Kakao is now. So they, they are the uh, Kakao Talks basic strength they have. Yes. Go back one, one page. After this video, if I were you, I would do this. After this video, next slide, you create a one simple, very big, uh, 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 simple uh, slide, put a Kakao Talks strength or Kakao Talks value what Kakao Talk has in the marketplace. A one sentence strong message to tell the next three slides of one slide, one message only. So have us have a, a big title here, Kakao Talk Strengths, what Kakao Talk has, whatever title you want to use, go to the next page. Don't, don't put three uh, uh, things in one slide. Put one slide, one idea, one slide, second slide, second idea, and moving forward and tell us why those are strong assets of Kakao Talk as a basic foundation of Kakao Talk's corporate strength, okay? Moving forward. Now, from the strength, the next slide, the right next slide has no relevance. Go back again. You talk about the strengths of your client. You make the client feel good. Okay, I am Kakao Talk CEO. You're the consultant talking to the CEO. Hmm. You have those value, those strengths. Good. You know those strengths. Good. Now what? You have no re relevance between this this message and the next message. Let's go to the next message. Um, you are jumping to one idea to another without the bridge. Try to create some bridge between one idea, which is the strength, next idea, which is the weakness, and um, maybe you are missing the following. How about this? I'm giving you an example. Um, Google, for example. You give a case study of a similar company who's doing it better or worse. And you make the connectivity, relevance between the case study and your own client, Kakao, 
then you can gain the credibility and relevance to right there and there. This is how I, might, how, how I might do it. You know, Google is the world's biggest uh, uh, portal, internet portal out there. Everyone comes to Google to search and enjoy their life over internet. And at the same time, Google introduced what they call Google Wallet. Now, though it has been only a few years, it is number one digital payment system in the world. Okay, there's a relevance right there. Everyone comes to Google to do the Gmail, to do the search. They want to enjoy their life on this digital age. So while they have the entire uh, worldwide population under Google's umbrella, they also introduce Google Wallet, which is the digital uh, payment system, which is the wireless uh, application. This is number one. They may be doing something really good while they run a, the number one portal in the world, while they produce number one digital wallet in the world. And go to Kakao Talk. Kakao Talk, by, like uh, Google, it is number one in Korea in the internet community. But Kakao Pay is nowhere near how Google Wallet is performing around the world. Google Wallet covers 200 nations out there. Kakao Pay or Kakao Talk only covers one nation, which is Korea. Still number one in Korea, but where is other 199 countries out there where Kakao Pay may, may operate? And even in Korea, Kakao Pay doesn't operate too much. What's the missing part there? You create the attention. You compare Google, Google Wallet, they're doing a good job. Show some you know, connectivity, show some bridge of ideas. And you show Kakao Talk, number one in Korea, Kakao Pay. I don't know where Kakao Pay is. And what's missing? What's the problem? What are they doing wrong? You create the uh, refreshing, attention-getting idea so that we can be with you. Now you just go, not you going too fast with your own idea only. Bring us along every step of slide. You are the expert, we are not. Educate us. Tell us something that we know, like Google's story, so we can relate to you. And then we are on the same page, same ground. You take us to the next slide, and it's easier for us to follow you by doing that kind, uh, caring, of us. Do you follow? Good. Now, you are telling your client, Kakao, to change complicated mobile payment system. So you know you don't need S at the end. Is it what you're trying to say? You are telling the client, right? The comment right there. It's changing. Kakao Pay changes the market. Okay. All right. Then say so. Hmm? Kakao Pay changes the door, whatever it is changing. Okay. And to provide easier, faster, safer payment system. To provide easier, calmer, faster, calmer, and safer payment system. That's consistent in your message. Okay, why? I don't know why. Next page. Oh, too much. You say something that Kakao Pay is doing or trying to do, and you don't even know. You don't even tell us why. Why provide those system? Why easier, faster, safer system? This is why. No, 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 no. You telling you are you are pointing out Kakao Pay's strength. They have a huge population in Korea. They have technology. They have a community that can provide easier, faster, safer digital mobile payment system. Why? Because with the wallet system, the conventional system, these are the problems they face. These are the pain points they have, they being the consumers out there. You're missing that link. See, you're thinking all this in your brain because you are experts. You are not. Um, simplifying those ideas and sharing it with the clients, with the audiences. You're thinking like a genius, you're not telling us what's in the detail or in, in, in a simple format. Tell us why simpler, easier, faster, safer payment system because, next slide, not this, next slide says without it, without the Kakao Pay like system, without like, without like a Google Wallet system, Entire payment market out there is complicated, 
more expensive, slower, a uh, lot of problems. This is why you should use Cacao Pay. And then moving forward, why Cacao Pay is not spread? While Google Wallet is widely used, you got to pinpoint why right there. Why Google Wallet is famous and popular, while Cacao Pay is not. What's the problem? Pinpoint those problems. Tell us in a simple format, one word. Your presentation, while using a very shiny yellow Cacao's uh, emoticon and everything, is too, uh, too much, maybe. You are writing the uh, uh, fame of Cacao Talk while not giving a clear, concise message. Compare your presentation with uh, Xiaomi's presentation. Xiaomi has their idea, their message. They are, they are pinpointing it, getting to the point, giving us the message. Not presenting very fancy graphics and not, not knowing that what, what are we receiving from here. You are making us too much confused, in a sense. And I know it is not an easy company to analyze. While you understand what to do with it, make it simple. Make it to one point. Kako Talk is huge community. Google is huge community in the world. Well, it's in Korea only. Google Wallet is uh, huge in the world in payment system. Kakao Pay is not. What's the problem? Make it a simple statement, simple pain point, and just focus on that simple problem, and you'll be all right. Do not spread too much. Do not spread too thin. Keep it simple. Keep it focused, and you'll be powerful. Next page. Again, you have a uh, Korean text in the right where nobody, ca nobody cares, nobody can understand. Assume that everyone here is English, English speaking and you did not bother to translate what's in there. Okay? And assume that everyone doesn't speak uh, Korean language. For example, this is English speaking audience group and I don't know what's, what's, what's in there. Uh, that's something you want to fix as well. Okay? Um, now you're saying problem. Uh, maybe you want to say the problem uh, earlier and give us the idea of what you're trying to say. What's the message here? What's the solution here? Okay, let's move on to the next page. The way you present it, like you print, uh, pointed out, you have too many information in, too many in, in one single slide and in a not in a very visually uh, displayed manner so that it, it adds the confusion. How, uh, how about you put one problem, one explanation in one slide, move on to the second slide, and then move on to the third slide. Easier, simpler, getting to the point way. Okay, moving forward, same manner. Too complicated, too much information. Now, you're touching many ground. Keep your idea simple. Kakao Talk has a lot of population. Korea has 50 million people, and Kakao Talk maybe have, I don't know, uh, 40 million uh, users. <laughs> you got everyone using Kakao Talk. Now, no one's using, or little people using Kakao Pay. Why? Is it because FinTech? Then focus on FinTech. Is it because of uh, what's missing in a service like Google Wallet? Focus on that. Focus on one problem, one solution, and give us the uh, uh, value from your message, from your brain power that we can understand, we can agree with you, that your job is done. You don't have to cover legality, government issue, technology, consumer behavior, too much to cover, too much. Keep it simple, keep it focused. Next. Stop, go back. Um, in English uh, language, it's not very advisable to use the letters from top to bottom. Regulation is written in vertical manner. Try to put it in horizontal manner. It's not the best way to put any, uh, any vocabulary there. Um, again, the relevance issue. Is it relevant in your uh, presentation? I don't know. Keep it simple. Keep it focused. Do not say too many things in, in your entire presentation because we'll be confused. Are you talking about the regulation? Talking about the population? Talking about the behavior? Talking about the psychology? I don't know. Talk to one simple idea and we will understand you better. Next. Again, you jump to a solution, 
to a technology that everyone can, can adapt to. Maybe that is the solution. If that's the case, build the ground for your logic. If RFID is the solution for Kakao Pay's problem, and it'll become like, at least in Korea, become like Google Wallet in the world, then you're solving the problem with that technology. Tell us why the technology is the, uh, the best evidence, best the ground to build the customer base for Kakao Pay based upon Kakao Talks population in Korea, which is number one. There is a problem with Kakao Pay that they do not absorb Kakao Talks population. Is it because RFID is a problem? I don't know. If that's a problem, which is okay, tell us why there's the problem. Why, well, tell us why that's the solution. Say it's the same time. They don't do this, that's the problem, the solution, and why that's the solution. Give us understanding, build us a, uh, logic, of our, our, our evidences. Next page. Okay, again, go back. Go back. Now, at the end, now, I'm sure you have not finished your thought, okay? Uh, when you provide solutions for Kakao Talk, next page, instead of ending like this, if you can, provide if Kakao Talk or Kakao Pay, Kakao Company, listen to your consulting team to understand the problem, to understand a simple solution, then maybe end with the value that solution you provide will create. What's the ending result? If we accept, agree your solution, proposal, what's next? What happens to Kakao uh, company next year, year after, in Korea, maybe in the world? Can we become like uh, Google Wallet in, in three years? How? I don't know. Okay? Give us the future of our company if we listen to your proposal. And then, next page, without saying bye, without saying bye, maybe give us some one word, one sentence, one picture that's going to give us a lasting impression that will do a better job than saying bye. Okay? Any other comments? Thank you. Big hand, please. We'll take 15 minutes, come back at 6 o'clock, we'll finish the other two teams. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jisoo, and I am the leader of Team Black. Before I get to my presentation, I'd like to start with one of my favorite sayings that goes, Little strokes fell great oaks. Well, since March, our team and I have been working on little strokes. We have continuously been analyzing BBQ's issues, and we were looking for the right future of BBQ. And now we believe it is about time we fall the great oak today. As you can see in the slide, I will go through one by one problem solutions and results order. Uh, first, we will go with the problem. Now, our, our team's opinion on the BBQ's problem is that we believe inefficient management led to BBQ's <laughs> huge loss. And we're talking about the interest expense and loss of valuation using equity methods. And interest expense means BBQ is highly debt, and loss of valuation using equity method means inefficient management. And of course, there is the current net loss, which is 4 billion won, which is not small. The next problem we found out about BBQ is that it is no longer the most popular franchise in the industry. The attitude of being bossy became an issue recently and it really damaged its brand image. And to explain the being bossy part, for those of you who doesn't know, it in Korean it means kapjit. And so you might be asking the question, why is this a big problem? In order to find out why this is a big problem, we have to look at the precedent of Namyang Yuo, which is a dairy industry of Korea, which had a pretty much similar problem with BBQ. It was being bossy and 
the result was awful. Namyang sales fell sharply, 27%. And this was due to the customer's boycott. And this is not a story made up. And I think it could also happen to BBQ as well. And now, I would like to present you our team's solution. And I believe it will fall great oaks. As our solution, we suggest you the 3D printer. Yes, you heard me right, it is a 3D printer. In order to explain our 3D printers, I would like to tell you how it works. First, customers order, and then we send them our recipes, and then they just print it out at their home, and there is a chicken. So, uh, we are expecting a future where 3D printers are ubiquitous. Well, as you can see in the chart, The market values continue to rise, and but I'm sure you might still wonder if this is actually happening in reality. To show you that it is really happening in our lives, I would like to tell you several facts. Uh, the patent of core technology recently expired, and it makes the 3D printers get cheaper, and of course, the technology will develop faster than before. And on Amazon, they are actually being sold at one to two million ones. In Taiwan, they are actually planning to release a 3D printer, a food 3D printer, in 600,000 to 800,000 won this year. Gartner, the world's best IT consulting firm, uh, said 3D printer will proliferate by 2018. And I would like to tell you a fact here. Personal computers became, well, personal computers got to every household in less than 20 years. And smartphones, it took only seven years. So, why not 3D printers? That was the end for the 3D printers. And along with the 3D printers, the second solution we have is about consumer valuation. Before I get to this, I want you guys to take a look at a video. Benchmarking Apple, we thought BBQ could actually make a close relationship with customers as well. And also, there is the example of McDonald's. They recently held an event called Big Mac Song, and it was held successfully. And a lot of people participated and they enjoyed it. So McDonald's did it, so why can't BBQ? Well, that was a big mech song, and now I would like to talk about the last part of my presentation, the results. Truth be told, we are not giving you a solution on current profit or the cost structure. The expense and costs were actually from the interest and the valuation. However, the problems were temporary. 
And I do know PPQ has made a lot of improvements from that time. And I do know some expenses were cut off and that you are actually making profit now. But I also know that our team is suggesting the idea of 3D printer for BBQ's future and it's for its future benefit. We promise that our idea will cut unnecessary costs and will bring the positive future benefit for BBQ. And we are also expecting a positive brand image from the customers by forming intimate relationship. Well, our best hopes are in gaining BBQ's popularity back and staying that way. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was actually all of my presentation, but please take a look at this picture right here. So, there was one time when Korea started to jump into the shipbuilding industry. Everybody laughed, other countries laughed, and they made a joke about it. They said, Korea's a small country, they can't make a shipbuilding industry. Well, now, Korea is actually the number one in its industry. They make fascinating ships. And I know 3D printers, they sound like a joke to you. I, may, I know some might actually laugh about it. But if you are, I want to tell you that you might be missing the next best one. Thank you, that was it. Okay, I'm, I have a lot of comments for you, Jisoo. First of all, your uh, delivery. Again, you were shaking your body. Maybe you don't know because you do it naturally, but try not to shake your body. Try, try to have your lower, lower, uh, lower body fixed to the ground. Okay? And if you need to use your hand gesture, use your hand gesture as you emphasize to look at some people, to point out some, some facts. But you use uh, mo moving the bodies uh, without any necessary uh, means of it, and that's distraction. Okay? Try to be stable, not move too much. If you had to move, you need to approach somebody to give an emphasis on something, okay? That's one thing. Overall, uh, go back to a few slides, maybe 15. Show the big slide, slideshow. Throughout the presentation, this team uses uh, two small text. Very small text in a long sentence format, nobody cares. Use a, you have a big space here, and you only have a very small text. Are you afraid you're going to use a lot of ink? I'm not sure. Okay, use bigger text. Use a simpler form of uh, 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 language instead of long, uh, stating uh, sentences. Maybe you can use a keyword, a simpler format of sentence, so we can follow easily. You're reading everything from the uh, screen. Not good. Okay, try to use a, a simpler, more powerful statement. Um, Let's go back to the uh, first page. Let's go a little. OK, well, first page, first page, second page. You, you didn't need those, you know, but uh, you just have to show it was one thing, one, one single page. Next page. OK, wait, stop. Show the uh, text, too. It was a. Uh, fresh idea uh, to use their financial performance as the indicator of the problems. By showing the financial performance, showing the uh, loss in different fields of category, okay, that's uh, a ground we can, uh, we can agree on. Well, okay, we have a loss. And you are explaining why we have a loss. Um, then we are willing to listen to you, how you can fix why we have a loss based upon the fact that we have a loss, okay? It was a good start to uh, get to the problem, ground zero, okay? That's what I wanted to point on. Okay. And then next, oh, before we go on, every currency, you want to put the unit, if it's Korean won, you put Korean won. Just putting the numbers and putting the billion doesn't mean anything. Put the unit specification in every currency specification, otherwise it's just a number, okay? Next page. Now, um, the reason why BB Kitchen has a loss is because it has a problem with the uh, brand, with the market itself. Now, you want to create the connection, the relevance. 
you want to create, you want to present the evidence uh, why that you, what you're saying is the true. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Um, you are bringing the example of other companies, but you are not actually giving us enough data, enough information about how BBQ did a bad job in maintaining and keeping a good brand image with the society, with the culture, with the audiences of the market. Uh, you didn't give us a lot of information. You just said, oh, BBQ is too bossy. What? Why? What's the example? What's, what was the instances and all, everything? Give us a little more information. Uh, uh, let us know why what you're saying is true. Okay? If you want to say Namyang Nyuop, say in English as well or next, next to it so that people can read what's, what's in the example as a display. Okay? Again, all the text are too, too small. Moving forward. Stop. Again, the problem, let's go back to two pages again. Let me re repeat myself. Go back. Go back. Two pages. Two slides. Another one. BBQ's problem is such and you are stating the problem without any explanation. Next page. Other similar companies with similar attitude problem, they have a boycott issues, they have a problem. But again, you don't talk about the details about the BBQs to doing something wrong with their brand uh, image, brand management. Uh, you, you just skip to the uh, problem, uh, solution, uh, problem conclusion that without giving us enough detail so we can agree with you. Okay? That's the uh, lack of information, lack of storytelling, lack of logic. Next page. Okay. Um, you were trying to give a surprise impact. Oh, 3D printing. Yes, you heard me right. But you, are, you have a risk of losing us. You said the big problem is financial loss. The reason for the financial loss was that brand management was not done correctly, and inside of it there was a cultural issue of the attitude problem of the company and the market. And then you jump right into, can we keep it quiet please? You jump right into 3D printing. It was a good surprise shock, but there's a chance, a risk that you may lose us. Okay? If you do not want to lose us, maybe before or after you choose, you choose, you sequence, tell us why this will fill the gap of brand uh, reputation of being a bad company, bad reputation company to a better reputation company. Uh, you didn't tell me about uh, the reasoning why this would provide a uh, 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 lessening of the gap of the attitude between the company and the market's perception about the company's brand. We just jumped right into it and there was a big gap and we, we, lo we lost you. Moving forward. Two small text, once again, you emphasize on 3D printing industry, not about the food industry or the BBQ itself. You put too much attention on 3D printer because you believe in it so much, but you did not create the uh, relation between 3D printer and BBQ and the brand image and the financial loss. That you have a, a clear issues. Financial loss, brand reputation was bad, being bossy. Solution is that you have to create a, a close relationship between the market and the company and suddenly BBQ, uh, suddenly 3D printer, and you talk about the market of the 3D printer. You're jumping too much between issues and ideas and not creating the relevance between one point to another. You are giving us the uh, I'm lost type of the attitude. Okay, next page. Again, your claim is good. Create some more relevance about how those uh, industry in next uh, whatever years may help BBQs to uh, solve the problem we have of financial loss, brand image loss, a problem, so on and so forth. You are throwing some claim one by one, but you're not creating the connectivity between those different issues of elements. Okay, so try to create some create, create a, a connectivity, the relevance. Next page. Um, like you said, we were puzzled. Why you show iPhone video? Why you show Big Mac video? Um, you have less information about BBQ 
you have more information about 3D printing, iPhone, Bing Mac. Looks like we are being educated about iPhone, Bing Mac, and 3D printer, not BBQ. You have a little information about BBQ, you have more information about everything else. I'm kind of lost too. I'm puzzled why you emphasize too much on something that we don't need too much. If you want to say something on those, say more things about BBQ and create a relevance between those examples, case studies, analysis, and why those examples are relevant to BBQ's issues. Try to create the bridge and connectivity. You're missing that, we lost. Next page. Um, everyone, if you want to show videos, try to check the, uh, the technicality, volumes, see if it works or not, everything. In the middle of the presentation, if you are uh, lost and trying to fix the problem, volumes and everything, it looks very bad. Okay? Check before the presentation. Okay? Try not to go back and forth between the PowerPoint and the video clips too much because it will give us a lot of confusion. Try to create a, a clean flow uh, between the PowerPoint and the videos if you want to use it. Okay? Next. Next. Again, too small printing, and I don't even know what's in there, and I don't even know why you say what you say, because um, it's in your head, not in our heart. It is in your head, not in our heart. Try to create a uh, relation between your ideas and your understanding. You're missing that part. Okay? You're good, you're expert, you're smart, I respect you, but we don't know anything about your ideas. There's a missing uh, bridge right there. Create a bridge between our heart with your, your mindset. Try to have a, a clear why this is the case. Xiaomi today did an excellent job of pinpointing the problem, providing the solution, creating the connectivity of the understanding. They did a very good job. While these are good uh, presentation in content, delivery of your content to our understanding is something that can be improved, I think. Okay? And you've seen Xiaomi's team, and you can do the same thing, maybe even better than Xiaomi's team next, next week. Next. Same common goes. Next. It was good. It was good, but again, 3D printing, Hyundai, your, your uh, pattern of logic is they want to create a lot of shock, which is good. But if you want to create a shock in our psychology, try to put some evidence behind it so that your shock creation does not remain in, uh, okay, now what? We totally lost. Okay? Try to be more kind to provide details that your shock therapy works, and we, 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 the BBQ, can follow the same example of Hyundai or whatever, Big Mac or iPhone, we can do something together. There was very little, if not none, on what we can do as a BBQ company to follow Hyundai's iPhones or Big Mac's uh, uh, good examples. We were missing those parts. You pointed out problems, but you, didn't, you never gave us the uh, hand-carrying solution to what to do to be like that. Okay? Try to fill those gaps, if, and they'll, you'll be all right, I think. Any other comments? I agree. I agree. Uh, he's good at creating a lot of shocks and cre creating the attention. And if you can just uh, give us a little, more, little bit more uh, details about how those shocks that you impose can be applied to uh, the happiness that we can share. Okay, we have a shocking situation, now you provide a solution that can pr uh, solve the problem, then we are happy. We, are, we, are, we as a BBQ company, we are happy with the solution. And if you don't make us happy at the end, we remain as a shocked, and that's not good. Okay, and try to stay stable, don't move too much. Okay, thank you, next team. Good afternoon. We'd like to start <laughs> by saying thank you. Thank you for uh, the opportunity you're offering us to present here for you today. We are so excited to be here and can't wait to show you uh, what's waiting Sony in the future. Sony once stood synonym for excellence and for the best one can get in the market. Our mission is to bring you back to where you belong, the top. Make Sony a company a life companion that inspires your curiosity beyond your imagination. Having analyzed your numbers, it's clear Sony deserves a bright future that makes the people dream, like no more losses, 
no more accumulation of losses, but the realization of an utopia. Uh, so an utopia for the customer and for you. All right. It's easy to spot. The mobile division is the biggest source of losses. At first, one might advise to sell that department, but we don't, in fact. We actually advise um, um, to keep the, uh, the mobile department and make out of your biggest problem the key solution for the future success of the company. Um, we are about to witness innovation at its best, capturing customers' interest. But how, one might ask. Because we're here to, we're, we're here, uh, to sell them a product. We're here to offer them a dream, a dream of how easy life can be with their new partner, Sony, doing what has never been done before. Now, my highly esteemed and visionary colleague, Nicholas, will explore with you the dream we call reality. All right. Thanks a lot. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, uh, Sony wants to like, revolutionize the place you live in. You currently call it a house, they want to make kind of a castle of it. And like, I would like to show you one of the masterpieces and like few products that we have selected that might be the, the most innovative and the greatest potential products that uh, Sony is currently producing. So yeah, we would like first to uh, lead you to your new apartment. So actually, this is the, your current one, but what they are, like, are producing right now that's like a, a sailing screen that you would have on your, on your sailing. So lying on your bed, you could watch, for example, a movie, or just you could set up a new atmosphere, like with, like with stars in the sky. And also, um, there is like this little projector that could replace your TV. So that's a really high quality one, and you could make, like, that's really easy to transport. So every place in the world could be your new living room, actually. Then uh, let's follow the, the visit of your flat. Uh, I will bring you to the private room. So uh, here you get a few uh, innovative devices. So this uh, LED bulb speaker, that's a light, but also a speaker. So it's, uh, it's uh, really the cutting edge technology on the market. But uh, there is also like this little uh, projector that could be out of uh, Minority Report, it's, you can see, if you've seen this movie. And um, uh, actually, at this stage of the presentation, you could think uh, Lloyd told us about the, the bad financial figures of the, of the company, but even though they are making amazing product, there are still financial losses. So that might be strange to you. You might wonder what's going on with this company. But uh, as he explained, so that's the mobile phone division that is making all those losses. So um, actually, I will ask you just a little question to make it a bit more clearer for you. They are not con convincing their, their, the consumers to buy their, their mobile phone, but Okay, just who in this room owns uh, Sony smartphone? No. Okay. Oh, Don't no. be ashamed. Huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> so no one? Okay. Uh, that's a shame because we would have paid you a beer for tonight, actually. If you had one. But uh, okay, nobody. So uh, this is exactly the problem, actually. Like their mobile phone should be the key, like for opening the door of the dreams that like Sony wants to provide you. All those products. They could be like provided to you if the mobile phone was making the right job. Actually, it's not. So let's just take a benchmark uh, to the to the best company in the industry, so Apple. So why why is it so successful? Okay, they are developing good products, the iPhone, for example, but not only actually. Like they are developing some of the programs, so iTunes, so uh, some complementary products as well, the iPad, the Mac. Okay, and. Then they are connecting them together. Actually, they are creating kind of a cloud by uh, synchronizing everything. And that's a way to attract some consumers in their kind of Apple world, I would say. And like, okay, we could say attract or maybe like trap them in this world. So like this, they have to buy more and more Apple products. And like the thing which is strange is that like Sony has developed even more products than Apple. But the, the thing is that they haven't managed to connect them all for the moment. 
So the product that we are going to present to you right now, that will be actually a way to connect everything, to make it like a Sony world that will be maybe even more than, than the world of Apple because they have more products. So this would be, the, we don't have the name yet, and we, we are going to ask you at the end to suggest some, uh, some names. Actually, we have uh, came up with some names right now, maybe I will propose it to you. And uh, you can select the right one, or if you have any idea, we will decide it together for the final presentation. Uh, so basically, that's a bracelet. So uh, that would be a way so to enter the Sony's world. And um, it's basically projecting on your, on your skin, so the, the screen of the phone. It has all the functionalities that have the, the current smartphones, actually. <coughs> so for example, you can phone, you can uh, listen to your music via, via Bluetooth headphones. And uh, yeah, you, you use it the same way, so just with your fingers. And uh, it's using the technology that they already developed, so the Pico projector that I showed you in the living room. And uh, yeah, it can be uh, also used under the water or under the champagne, depending on uh, how <laughs> wealthy you are. So um, let's go to the, to the core piece right now. I ah, know, not yet. Wait a second. So. Um, this, uh, this is like a bracelet. We are really proud of this idea, actually. <laughs> uh, so that would be like connected to all the devices. So to the, the Sony TV, the Sony home theater, the projector, the speaker. So you could activate it all, only with your bracelet. So using Bluetooth or internet or whatever. And then also with the, the cameras, for example. So then it would be sending the pictures directly on your brace, bracelet, so you could like see them. But you could also, for example, put your the Sony camera somewhere, take the picture with the bracelet. So that would be really like, a, there would be a huge synergy between their, their products actually. So now that's the 4P, I guess. Yeah, that's it. So uh, the product I already told you about, that would be like uh, a controller, and that would be uh, replacing the classical smartphone. Actually, we, we thought about a bracelet, especially because uh, we thought maybe if they are trying to do the same as Apple, they would be seen, for example, as Samsung mm -hmm. and like as a, as a copier, and maybe that would be uh, the right way to the success. So uh, we thought about a different product. Uh, the place, uh, actually, Sony has already all, all the distribution channels. So you have the Sony store, you have the, uh, the uh, website, of course, so you could buy it online, and also the electronic store and reseller that you can find everywhere in town. Like we would also provide them this way. Uh, then the promotion, so uh, first we would like deliver it in a pack, so you would have headset, a charger, a warranty as well for one year, because to make uh, them believe, or, which is true, but to make them believe that uh, our product is great, and uh, also discount coupon for buying all the products, <coughs> so to really attract them in this Sony world for, and for developing the other product lines of Sony. And, uh, then the advertising would be made on, uh, on the website, on the TV, so the, the usual ways. But uh, I guess the more interesting, the most interesting thing right now is the price. So we'll go to the next uh, slide. So here we uh, have the, manufa the manufacturing costs uh, for, for the bracelet. We've uh, based our calculations on the other smartphones that are currently uh, produced. So uh, the iPhone or like the Galaxies. And we came up with, uh, with this final price. So that would be $226. Maybe I can let you a little bit of time to read this. So that's uh, all the functionalities that we would add to the phone. And uh, OK, I don't know if you agree or not. It doesn't really change anything anyway. So um, and there is also other costs. So the uh, operating expenses. So for example, Right now, uh, Sony is using like 4.7 yeah, billion on R&D and uh, we would assume that they will spend like 1 billion on this phone, like on the, on the smartphone uh, uh, research. And so we expect it to sell 60 million uh, devices, so 60 million bracelets. We will explain you in the next presentation why. And uh, so if we divide this cost by the number of uh, cell phones, that we are expecting to sell, that's giving us this price, so $16 more. And there, then there is also the storage and the shipping cost. And so we have used the, the exact same uh, calculation, so we divide it per the number of, uh, of devices that we are expecting to sell. 
and that's giving another additional $42 uh, dollar, uh, cost, and uh, which leads us to a total cost of uh, $285. Of course, that's just an idea. Maybe there would be like some other additional cost due to some uh, manufacturing failures and stuff, but that wouldn't exceed the $300 uh, normally. So that is the price. And uh, yes, that is the end. So maybe as a conclusion, we wanted to say that uh, uh, the old king, which is uh, Sony, could come back to the, the deserved iron throne, but they just need one idea. Maybe the bracelet could be this idea. So uh, we hope you enjoyed, and uh, thank you very much. Everyone, can we please have your face? Okay, I've asked you to uh, pay attention. Some of you ignored my request. If you ignore my request, I will ignore you too. Okay. Uh, general comments. Nothing? All right, let me do it. Um, without even looking at the uh, screen, any of you, or any of you from your team as well, tell us a brief version of how Sony can come back to his kingship. Sony was once a king in this electronic world, right? You just said it. I am Sony's CEO. We have Sony's executives here, shareholders here. Everyone's Sony here. Everyone here, Sony, you are the consultants. Tell us how we come back to the king's throne. Okay. Give us a, a simple version. Give us a summary. Tell us how. Um, Without even looking at it. Okay. Tell, tell our Sony people here. Yes, actually, like the main losses of Sony nowadays, they come from the mobile phone because of uh, maybe the, the design or that doesn't really matter actually but some would advise to sell this division but we want to make it the key to connect all the products of Sony and uh, to, uh, to reinforce all the divisions so turn the loss into a profit and how? when changing the way we use smartphones so using a bracelet that would connect all the devices so you would be in this world, in this Sony world with an imaginative and innovative product, the bracelet. Say this. Say what you just said in the beginning of your presentation. Clearer, focused, powerful. You just said, without even looking at the a screen, Sony to come back as a king again, focus on mobile devices, smartphone devices, and how that can be done. In less than 30 seconds, you've finished your thought. Clear, concise, brief, and powerful. Do it in the beginning without even looking at the screen. Tell us, give us the connection, give us the bridge. Without, without reading your smartphones and reading the, scripts, reading the screens, you can impress us by giving us your enthusiasm, what you believe in. Now the details, let's go to the uh, beginning of the page. We had Lloyd, we had Nick. I'm gonna first comment on your presentation uh, delivery, okay? Lloyd, I'm not sure if you noticed, but we all did. You were moving a lot. You're reading your uh, smartphone, every screen, every text. You were not looking at the audience. You were looking at this, reading it like this. Not good, not good. Lose the smartphone, lose the reading, like you did, and you can do it too. Tell the audiences what you believe in. One word, two words, simple words, they'll do the job. Instead of reading what you, ha what you know, no one cares. Okay? So that's one big comment. Do not move like this. For Nick, what you did most was you were looking at the screen. You were even covering the screen. People were looking at your back. Not good. They're not interested in your back. They're interested in your face. Good, handsome face. Good, smiley face. Okay? Yeah, you have that, okay? You were looking at the screen, and you were talking to the screen, and you were even covering it this much. People saw your back, not good, don't do that, okay? Stand over here, tell the, tell the audiences, make the eye contact, say a few words, you, look, you wanna look at it, take a look at it, come back to the audiences again. Don't stick your eye to the screen, stick your eye to the audiences. Everyone else too, not just Nick. What else? You were referring to the audience, well, referring to the uh, Sony as this company, they. No, 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 no. We are Sony. If you talk about Sony, we're all Sony here. 
Hello, uh, executives and shareholders of uh, Sony. We're here to present the solutions for your company, for our company here. Not they or not this company, okay? We are Sony. If we have a BBQ company come in, we're all BBQ now. Same thing for cacao and everything else, okay? Treat us like your client, not somebody else. We are your clients. We are Sony when you speak to us, okay? What else? Overall, it looked like a uh, product development presentation. It looked like. It would look like more of the uh, internal consulting where you guys are Sony's uh, product development team. We have every everything here to, to listen to you about what's to produce as a technology. You are not actually addressing how the entire corporate strategy should transform to. Overall uh, ambience, overall mood was like, like you were introducing a new product. And we were more interested in learning how to shape our company's strategy so we, we still can become the king again, like the, the way we did it for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Okay? Let's look at the uh, first page. Go back. No, first page. All right. You say, new Sony. Good. If you produce new Sony as the uh, cover of the direction of the strategy, uh, advice, then finish with new Sony at the end. You are saying something that you're going to transform Sony into a new Sony, which is being a king again, or better than king, whatever it may be, then end with your uh, solution of new Sony solution. What's at the end? I don't know. Okay, uh, next page. We are Sony, and you are telling us about Sony that we already know, then don't stop there. Okay, let us know that you understand Sony by describing Sony's mission, Sony's corporate identity, Sony's current status. Good. Now, remember what I just asked you at the last minute? Tell us how you can transform Sony to become king again. You are not looking at the screen this time. You are out of your own enthusiasm, your belief. You are explaining how Sony can become king again in less than 30 seconds. That was very good. Do that in the beginning, okay? Point us that Sony was once the leader in the uh, global electronics, telecommunications devices market. That was back in 1980, 1990. Now in 2015, we lost that leadership to Apple, Samsung, and others. We like to revive Sony's great reputation Great standing as the leader and the king of the electronics market or the telecoms market, whatever market maybe you want to refer to, and this is how we can do that. Create a strong comment in the beginning so that we can have a respect for you, we can listen to you, not look at the smartphones like you guys do, some of you out there. Can we have a focus, please? Okay. Next page. Again, the text should be bigger than it is right now, okay? If you want to create some provoking ideas that financial loss is a problem and you want to say underlying reasons why we have a financial loss, then continue with that consistency in the logic. Give us a storytelling that why that result came about. Let's see next page, see if you have it. Well, especially in the mobile field, and see if you have the reason why that, that was the uh, case. Let's, let's see next page. I don't see it. See? Go back again. Let me re re repeat myself. Again. You were saying that Sony has a problem, which is financial loss. When you have a financial loss as a result of the problem, we should have underlying reasons why that happened. I want to know, as Sony CEO, why we have the problem. Okay? And you don't show that why in a clear manner. Next page. Show me next page. You have too much information. I can't even read those fine prints. Remember the Xiaomi team? Xiaomi's brand image 
is an, is an issue. Xiaomi cannot be Apple. Xiaomi cannot be Samsung. It's a cheap, low Chinese brand. Yet, we have the best technology appraised by the, uh, uh, the, the IT journal, the colonist in, in New York City. Then, what are we missing? A big brand image. That's what we're missing. What do we do? We care for our clients, consumers, family, their life, their happiness. That's a strong key point Xiaomi has pinpointed. Made it very simple, professional, easy to understand. They empathize, empathize with us. Here, too much information, I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about Sony's entire 100-year history. I'm not interested. I am Sony. I'm not interested in my own history. I'm interested in what I can do to become king again. I hired you because I don't know how to become king again. I think you know because you're a smart man and woman here in your team. Tell us why and how I can become king again, not give us the 100-year story. Okay? Keep it simple. Keep it powerful. Yes? Excellent. That's it. That's yeah, it. But then don't say it or say it? Say it. Say it. Uh, 20 years ago, what, 15 years ago, uh, Sony lost the momentum in the entire global market. Why? Sony produced this, but we missed that. Remember a few weeks ago I showed the uh, innovation uh, video when they, are, when they have a success? The success can become a poison or cancer, become the enemy of, of their own future. Because they have a success. Sony had a big success for decades. But Sony was number one. Because they have so much success, they got lazy, they got bored, I don't know, they got something wrong, and they never looked at what's next. Three years, five years, ten years down the road. While Samsung, Apple, other companies innovated, the next thing, while looking at the market, while working so hard, Sony missed a lot of part. What did we lose? What did we miss? Pinpoint those. Was it really the smartphone, the mobile devices? Then say so and tell us why, how, and tell us how we can come back to the big war. Apple, Samsung, now Xiaomi is leading the entire mobile market, the smartphone. Can Sony come back to it and become the king again of the entire worldwide market of electronic devices, including mobile? I don't know. Don't just say that you don't, you expect, you hope to have. Don't say things that you hope to have. Say things that you really believe in, that's going to work. Keep it simple, like Kakao Pay. I spoke with the leader of the Kakao team a while ago. If Kakao Talk has nearly 50 million user base in Korea, and so little in Kakao Pay, don't tackle five different uh, problems. Regulations in the uh, FinTech law, something you cannot even touch, forget about it. Pinpoint on one major issue. Maybe it's the uh, awareness. Maybe you need more advertising. I don't know. Pinpoint one major problem, tackle it, something that you really believe in. If you don't believe in what you, with the solution, it shows. You're here to just say about the time. Okay? If you believe in your own message, like Xiaomi Tim did. Xiaomi said, brand, is, brand image is the problem. We create the connection between the consumer and the brand and the product and they will love us. Good, that makes sense. Keep, kept it simple, powerful, and brief. You guys talk about so many stories and not knowing what to do once we like to become the king again as a Sony. Okay, next page. Too many letters, too many icons, and I don't know what you're, what you're talking about. You have a lot of ideas in your brain power. Good, I respect you, you're a smart man, but give us the break. We don't know anything about it. We like kids. Give us a simple, easy to follow, easy to understand, comment, so we can, we can say, ah, I see, I see. Remind us how Sony did good, how Sony did bad. Like Kakao. We all Kakao when we talk about Kakao team here, right? We all Kakao. We, we know about Kakao. Remind us that Kakao Talk is huge. We have a nearly 50 million population in Kakao Talk. Remind us that Kakao Pay has very little. We know, but remind us. Tell us how Kakao Talk's entire population can use Kakao Pay. Then you tell me something that I don't know. Same thing with Sony. Remind us Sony was really good once. Remind us that Sony missed a, a good turning point. Okay, I get it. We, we lost that momentum. And tell us how we can 
come back to become a king again. Then you're telling us what we know, and at the same time, you're telling us something that we never thought about. Then I will respect you. Next page. All right. You write too many things in one single page. Try not to do that. Keep it simple. Keep it powerful. Okay? If you say so many things, when you go on a date, you're a man, you have a beautiful woman and on a date, okay? On a nice wine steak dinner, you talk about 10 different subjects and never talk about how much you love her. She's not going to be interested. Okay? Keep it simple, keep it focused, keep it the audience focused. If you're on a date with a beautiful woman, you want to talk about her. You want to talk about the beautiful future, happy future with her. Not how much money you have, not, not, not the uh, schooling you have, not the friends you have. You can talk about a little bit, but if you lose the focus about you care about the audience, then we lose the interest about your message to us. Okay? So you say, Sony should do something that no, never been done before. Then produce something that, uh, the strategy that, that follows in consistency with your message now on the next page. And let's see the next page, see if you have it. All right, show us. Now, before you get to the details about the ceiling screens and movies and sleeping in the, from the floor and watch, there are, those are details. Give us the big picture first before you go into the details. Big picture may be to gain the leadership in the electronics market once again, as Sony once wore, with Sony should do this, the last thing you did when I asked you. Then you go into the details. Maybe you want to put one slide there between before and this page, one slide, this is what Sony should do, this word. This one sentence, one word, maybe one picture. That's what Sony should do, and the next page, this is how they do it. You're missing the gap, you're missing the part between one and the other. The other. There's no bridge between those two, just like uh, BBQ team did. They were, you were missing some bridge from your one thought to another. We don't know your thought, you have to let us know in a kind manner, please. Next page. Again, you are going to detail, you're missing the big picture, we, don't, we can't follow you. Next page. This is where you thought your idea was, oh, it was a proud idea. Your job is not to make you proud. Your job is to make Sony proud. To, to listen to you, to understand you, to agree with you, to implement your proposal and message, and become Sony proud again. You are proud of yourself as consultants. You don't do that. Everyone, you as consultants, your job is not to make you proud. Your job is to make your client proud. Remember that? Don't ever lose the attention and love of the audiences. If you're on a date with a beautiful woman, you want to make the beautiful woman proud, happy, and loving. Not you bragging about yourself. Right? That's the key point you were missing. Same thing, if you are helping the client to be proud again, to be happy again, to be strong again, your client will be happy to become the leader again in the marketplace and the company will become, once again, the king of the multi-billion dollar industry, then you be proud because you help them become very proud. That's how you want to be, be proud. Right? Does it make sense? Okay. And um, now, if you attempt to produce some idea about proposing some technology, try not to become product R&D meeting. Okay? Your job is not to talk about the technology, not the product itself, but to talk about how our company, Sony, can become better again, good again, great again. Okay? And if you have too myopic, too micro view about the technology itself, and not and miss the entire big picture about how Sony can compete against Apple, Samsung, Xiaomi, and become the leader again, I don't see much of those ideas from your presentation. You're missing the big picture while you talk about how many trees we have. When you have a forest, you want to build the forest, draw the forest. Okay, I want to build this big forest. This forest needs 752 trees to build this forest. And you count how many trees we have, we have 500. Oh, we're missing 272 trees. Then you go get 272 trees. You look at the big forest first, you count how many trees you need, then you plant the trees. 
You go the other way around. You plant the trees. How many trees do we have? Okay, we build all those trees and that's it. You're still missing the other portion that's going to make beautiful forest. Your job is to create beautiful forest. If the Sony is missing some trees, you tell us how we, get, we can get those trees and plant them to make it beautiful forest. That's your job. Not to focus on detailed trees, uh, trees colors, trees shapes. And no, 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 we're not interested in that. We're interested in how we can create beautiful forests so we can become the best forest in the world. That's what we're interested in learning from you, Mr. Smart Man. Next page. Um, I, didn't say, I didn't say 3D printing was accepted. I also made a comment that, OK, using 3D printer is a good idea, but you didn't, their, their team did not emphasize the details too much, the details enough about how that new technology adoption can change brand problem that BBQ has. They did not fill those gap. I said this, I made the same criticism as, the, as I did to your, your team. Yeah. I like your thinking, okay? You're not inventor, you're not product R&D center. Uh, product <coughs> technology, leave it to Sony. You give strategy of how to transform Sony back to this kingdom that can rule the world, and how maybe Sony would consider producing this type of product line using this tech technology, and why? Because that will create a new uh, ruling of the industry uh, trend. People use smartphone these days. They don't use internet desktop. They use mobile phones these days. What's next is wearable devices. Sony can lead the next trend by introducing wearable devices. Maybe that's the big picture forest you're drawing. Let us know. Let the detailed technology be taken care of by the client. You're not the R&D center uh, scientist. You are the thinkers. You're the strategy presenters. You are to save our <coughs> dream, save our fate. If I listen to you and, and I agree that, OK, the wearable is the future, and I adopted your recommendation, Next five years, Sony becomes number one, and Samsung lost every market. Thank you, Mr. Smart Man and Woman. I owe you, because you gave us uh, 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 understanding that uh, what should be done as a next step operation, next three to five years. Okay, it's a big picture, and that has to make sense, by the way. Again, uh, you're going through too much detail, which I'm not interested. Uh, I'm here to learn and be convinced and be understood the way you present the message. And the message itself is, is uh, something, that, something that I should agree on. And you are touching too many ideas and, and content. You're kind of uh, leaving us like waiting. What are you trying to tell me? Okay? Don't let us wait too much. When you're on a date, let's go back to date again. You talk about some subject. Oh, I want to talk about my military experiences, guys. Okay? To a, to a lady who ever went to military and who doesn't care about military, I want to talk about military and running some soccer play in military basis. I'm not interested as, as a woman. I'm interested in what's my next date. Are we going to go to the musical? Are we going to go get some beers or wines, or whatever? Say something about that interests me, okay? About the focus of the audience itself. Move forward. Price, a lot of details. I'm not interested in price details, okay? I'm interested in if we produce something like that, can we regain the market? And give us the reasoning why that is the case, okay? I'm not interested in the cost savings of the uh, packaging and production and the battery. I'm not interested. I'm interested in if we produce something like this, can we regain 40 billion market globally against Apple's and Samsung and Xiaomi? Can we do that? Stick with those logic. Be consistent, create relevance, convince me your idea works. Stay with that route and you'll be all right. You were off the road, talk about the trees and the dirt and squirrels and tigers. I'm not interested. I'm interested in my own road ahead. Tell me what's ahead for me. Next. Too many details, too little, I can't even read. I don't even know what they mean to me. I don't care. Next page. Thank you, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care, thank you. Okay, say something, show me something to make Sony proud, okay? Don't make yourself proud, make, make your client proud and they'll make you proud. Well, thank you, you can say it in your word.
Okay? Thank you in, in one single page out of the 20 or 30 page slide. The last page is maybe the most important page. And you want to say thank you for the last page, the last opportunity to grab the attention and the hearts of the client saying thank you. You just wasted one last moment. You can grab the attention and heart of the client. Okay? You want to put a message, that's the right moment, right opportunity to grab it. Thank you, you can say it in your word. Thank you very much. You're going to be king again. They will give you a big hand, say thank you, and not give any more messages. As a closing remark, they don't say, I don't need your thank you. I just, I just wasted my million dollars to pay you as a consulting fee. You did nothing for me. Don't thank me. You just wasted my money and time. Okay? Remember, opening, closing are the most important moment, opportunity to make your point across. The body, 28 pages out of 30, is just to give you the evidence of the relevance and data. Opening, closing is the opportunity to grab the attention, to gain the heart at the end. Grab the attention in the opening, have the client agree with you heart to heart. That's the closing. Last page you want to spend on saying thank you. You just wasted your last moment, last opportunity. Don't do that. Okay? Show some picture, show some word, a sentence, some remark that can say, wow, I like your idea. Wow, Hyundai, when nobody said Hyundai can do the shipbuilding because Korea is like a shitty country and you prove them wrong, I respect you. Gain respect by saying something that makes sense, not saying, oh, thank you very much. No one respects you for saying that. Right? Does it make sense? Yeah. Overall, let me give you a closing remark. You can go in. Thank you. Big hands, please. <laughs> this is week 14. Today, we've seen your last minute effort of what, you will, what you've been learning in the past 14 weeks. Some of you said, We've spent 13 plus 14 weeks now, and we're still puzzled about what to do. Well, maybe today and next seven days is the critical moment that you learn something and never be puzzled again. The, the title of this course is called uh, Global Communication in Finance. And I told you in the beginning, let us put finance in parentheses. Maybe we use financial law statement as the uh, reasoning for the consulting messages, but let's put us a little bit. Whether it's finance uh, caused or marketing caused or uh, cultural, uh, uh, cu culturally caused, we have an issue to solve for the companies out there. We take the uh, role of a consultant so we can have the uh, view from outside to look at inside that nobody, nobody can see. Global communication in business is rather the uh, preferred title of this course. However, whatever the title may be, what I want to give you as a discipline is that for you to think and act professionally. Let me repeat myself. The discipline of this course, entire 14 weeks, 16 weeks, is to give you the discipline for you to think and act professionally. Your students right now, when you graduate, I don't know, somebody will graduate, right? You'll never stay in Hanyang for 20 years. I hope not. You go on. You become better. You become king. You become president. You become CEOs. You become rich man and woman. Become happy. Now, what I need to do for you to become all that good as a professor, I want to give you a discipline on how to think and act professionally and with confidence, if I may. I kept it simple. Find the problem, find the solution, explain and define the value why your solution may mean something. I kept it simple so you can think simply, briefly, powerfully. And many of you lost in the journey of finding those solutions and values. Now, today we spent entire three hours listening to you, poking your brain, suggesting you criticizing you, complimenting you, some of you did a good job. And actually, I gave my love to you. I said a lot of things straightforward because I care for you. If I didn't care for you, okay, you did a good job. I'll see you next week. 
and I would just do a very uh, little job of making a lot of comments. I put a lot of emphasis on commenting every single slide, every single move, every single eyesight and eye contact. You know why? This very discipline you do, and you, you do from today and next week in a single seven days, one week time period, may change your attitude, your awake awakening, your understanding, your pattern of discipline that can last entire life of your career. You may work as a different field or profession. Doesn't matter, okay? Knowing how things are moving on and catching what's important and why that's important. And finding out the, uh, your reaction to counter the situation, whether it's good or bad, doesn't really matter. We were going through a discipline of how to think and act accordingly so you can become more professional with a lot of confidence. Doesn't matter your English is good or bad. Doesn't matter. If you have a perfect English and you speak stupid, like in a stupid manner, no one's going to respect you, especially when you go into a professional world out there after you graduate. They're not going to respect you. English is just a, a linguistic a tool. Thinking and, and putting into action so that it can help somebody to improve and get better and be successful and be proud is something that is beyond the linguistic uh, discipline. But linguistic discipline starts with how to absorb ideas, how to create the definition of the situation, how to create the uh, analysis of the situation and present the outcome, the results, so that people who listen to you when you communicate, they understand what's important, what's next for me to do. If they listen to you and they become same as before they listen to you, you've just wasted your time and their time. If they understand, okay, I now know, after listening to Jisoo and Nick and Lloyd, I now know, as a client company, I know what to do next. Thank you. I now know what's next. Thank you very much. They should say thank you, not you should say thank you. They say, thank you, Nick. Thank you, Lloyd. I now understand how Sony, what Sony should do as a next step to become the king again. Thank you your team. Client should say thank you. Because you just made client happy, proud, and see a vision of becoming a strong company again. Because you have awakened their sleeping time. A lot of companies out there, even Samsung, IBMs, Googles, and a lot of companies, they do make mistakes because they are boxed in in their own operation. If you get employed by those good companies, and you follow their uh, leadership while they are still boxed in, you become loser as well. So I took the simulation of looking at this company from outside, uh, out of box thinking as a consultant, so you can look at the inside transparently and see what's really important and find out, figure out what to do next. As long as you have that discipline in your thinking, no matter what you do out there, how you do out there, you're gonna be respected because you know how to think and you know how to, how to speak, you know how to act professionally and with a lot of confidence. And people respect those kind of individuals. Okay. Next week, from your scratch of the last minute draft, when you come back next week, I hope you make it simpler, more powerful, more empathetic. Your message you should believe in, otherwise no one's going to believe you. Make it clear, simple, brief, powerful, loving, so you can touch their heart, okay? You have to believe in what you say, otherwise no one's going to believe you, right? Come back next week. Uh, I hope you will learn from today until next Thursday a lot of things about your future, what you can do with your, with your life. Thank you very much. See you next week. And we're going to have a beer party. <laughs>